Hey, y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I am super, super busy right now, so I can't do this a full justice, but I really wanted to look at ARK Invest's Big Ideas 2021 that just came out this morning, or maybe it was last night. Anyway, I saw it this morning, and I think this is just amazing. I'm going to do several videos on this, but for now, I wanted to touch on chapters or sections 7 and 9, which is electric vehicle adoption and autonomous software, which also goes along with that. So it's a little bit awkward to interact with this, but I'm going to have to do that. I think I have to type the pages in by hand and there's a lot but anyway so we're going to start with this with this section and look at what they're saying about last year so you can see 2019 versus 2020 this is vehicle sales growth with ICE cars or gas powered cars versus electric cars and you can see that ICE cars were on a decline in 2019 of negative 4% growth whereas electric vehicle cars were on a 16% growth and what happened with the pandemic this year is that it really accelerated this trend so basically cars dropped by four times what they did in 2019 or negative 15 percent and electric vehicle cars in the meantime doubled by they went up from 16 percent to 33 percent so that's rather impressive you can also see as i've done many episodes on these kinds of things i've definitely done an episode on rights law so you should check that out they have modeled the decline in battery costs and you can see that it's a modeled 28 percent decline again i go into that in more detail in my video but basically, you can see the trend is really, really strong down to the right. And so, you you know, they're, they're, they're doubling and doubling and the prices are going down and down. And so they've basically hit the $100 point right now, which is where the first purple dot is, which is projected as opposed to real. And they are on a path to continue down pretty drastically, right? Every time they double, they're going to get down to $10 <laughs> you know, per kilowatt hour eventually. And that's pretty impressive. So they're, they're making progress. And that means that ga that EV cars are going to make a big jump in terms of, or a big reduction, I guess, in terms of their price. They're going to decline drastically over the next several years. And they're going to become very rapidly much less expensive sticker price wise than our ICE cars. So next page. All right. Electric vehicles are approaching sticker price parity. Hey, there you go. <laughs> this is what I get by kind of going through this the first time. Um, I may need to move my, let's see if I can move my little window. I'm going to shrink my window actually, because I can do that. I'm using OBS software. Hopefully I can do this interactively. Uh, it's not seeming to let me. There we go. Okay. Let me shrink that down a little bit. There we go. Okay. So now, as you can see, we have got 2019, 2021, 2023, and 2025. And you can see that right now, uh, ICE, or, excuse me, EV cars are still significantly pricier than our ICE cars. So you can see a Toyota Camry as an example, $25,000. That's a pretty reasonable thing. And they're comparing that to a 350 mile range EV. So I guess that would be the Model 3 would be the best comparison. You can see, however, right now they're more expensive. In two years, ARC is predicting they will have price parity. So the Camry is going to go up just a little bit due to inflation. And the cost of something like a Tesla Model 3 is going to drop significantly down to the $26,000 range. And by two, 2025, it's not even going to be a contest anymore. So that's pretty significant. All right, so in addition to cost, EVs are competing on range and performance. I think this chart is fascinating if you look to the top right. So basically what we've got is on the vertical axis, we've got range in kilowatt hours, um, you know, range per kilowatt hour. So basically how far it can go. And then we've got acceleration. Now, this is obviously not something that anyone has to care about, but it is cool to have fast acceleration and nice to have long range too. So you can see like the Porsche has really, really fast acceleration, but it's also got really low range. The kind of big outstanding thing out there is the Tesla Model 3 long range drive. They don't, or long range model, they don't have the Model Y in here, but the Model Y is going to be very competitive in that sense too. At least not that I see, yeah, I don't see it in there. Uh, you can also see that the 2018 Model 3 and the 2019 or 20 Model 3, there's a significant difference. But anyway, Tesla definitely stands out when it comes to acceleration and performance, right? They're, they've got that, <laughs> they've got that one wrapped up. 
All right. So today's battery prices, sell to vehicle technology. So this is something that we talked about previously in other episodes. Also, this has to do with battery pack design. So basically, if you have to package your batteries up into little boxes, and then you take those little boxes and you put them into bigger boxes, and you take the bigger boxes and you put them into bigger boxes, and you fill that all up with stuff and you put in structural material, which is what the top part of the graphic shows, that adds a, t a ton of weight and useless volume, basically, because none of that is generating power. Power. The bottom chart is what you're seeing from Tesla that they're going to do with their 4680 battery cells, which is that basically they're going to pack the cells directly into structural components. That is going to make a really big reduction in the cost and also increase the range that these cars have. So that's significant. All right, as far as traditional automakers, gosh, I need to move this over. Okay. So anyway, the important part that you can see here is that they are... Let's see if I can move this over just a little bit too. Yeah, I'm cutting off the very edge of this document, unfortunately. That is 2025, so that is really not that far away. Sorry, so the, the big giant thing, the 82% leap, is just four or five years away. So this is based on if traditional automakers overcome obstacles, the global EV sales are going to increase 20 fold. So this massive, massive thing you can see, it's gone up very, very slowly. And I kind of wish that they had the intervening years in, in between because you would see the exponential growth, right? So 2021, 2022, uh, 2023, 2024, 2025, you would see this massive like uptick that would go like this and you'd see a huge, huge exponential growth. This is basically what exponential growth looks like. They just cut out the middleman, but that is massive. And that means that EV cars, and this is assuming of course that legacy car makers can get this transition figured out. And that's not a small task, but if they do, EV cars are going to go crazy by 2025. So this is the other chapter or section that I wanted to look at. And this is a big deal. So if you looked at, if you watched the last video that I did, or one of the most recent ones, I talked about how Tesla could be worth trillions of dollars in profit per year by 2030. Interestingly enough, that's almost exactly what ARK is saying in their investment uh, big ideas prospectus that they have here. So I feel <laughs> pretty feel pretty vindicated. It seems absolutely insane. Like I said in my video, it is not intuitive at all that this would be the case. But if you look at the numbers, we're looking at <clears throat> an industry that will have over a trillion dollars in profits, not in revenue, but in profits by 2030. So that is just massive. So let's take a look at this, this um, graphic here, which is really fascinating. This graphic shows that we had very expensive cars back in 1871 when they were first invented. As we got to 1934, around, you know, around the time car industrialization really got going and worked pretty well. If we adjust for inflation from 1934 to 2016 to probably right now, automobiles adjusted for inflation have cost the same amount of money per mile to drive over all that time. So we're approaching 90 years-ish that they've cost the same amount of money. And that's pretty astounding. But what we're looking at here is the 25 cents per mile. So 70 cents per mile is what a car costs to drive right about now, which is essentially what I was showing you before about that in my video. But also what we've got here is if autonomous vehicles can come in and they can actually work, they're going to drop down to around 25 cents a mile. I projected this at 2030 because I thought it was a little optimistic to be at 25 cents a mile in 2025. But you can see here that ARK Invest thinks they're gonna hit that 25 cents per mile by 2025, which is huge. This is dependent on autonomous vehicles coming in and regulatory approval. So if both of those things happen, 25 cents per mile is the target and look at what happens really quickly once that takes place. All right, so you can see here that ride hailing with a human in charge is about $1.85, whereas ARC is projecting a dollar per mile for the consumer. Now, I was saying by 2030, that would come down and be significantly lower than 70 cents a mile. And that's about the break even point where people are going to stop owning cars. So I think what they're talking about is an interim you know, section where it costs about a dollar per mile with autonomous vehicles as opposed to a dollar eighty-five. That gets pretty close to the cost of what it costs a human being to own a car and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But basically, I feel like this is probably 2025 land. Um, yeah, well, this is saying by 2030. But my projection is 
that we're going to get this down. This right hand column is going to go significantly below a dollar per mile and it will go. I think my projection is somewhere around 40 to 50 percent excuse me, 40 to 50 cents per mile. So I think that when we hit that, as soon as it's significantly lower than 70 cents per mile, it's going to just completely upend everything and people are going to stop purchasing cars, basically. They're going to ride cars, right? Because why would you spend more money to own a car than just to hail one whenever you want one? Plus the fact you have all of those annoying problems with a car like maintenance and taking it in and insuring it and all of that other stuff. So there's a, there's a lot of reasons to just completely avoid having a car if you can avoid that. It's just too expensive right now. So, and also inconvenient, right? So we not only need to have cheaper per mile vehicle costs, but we also need to have those cars wherever we need them so we can hail them very rapidly and you're not spending a half an hour waiting for a car to show up. All right, so there are three autonomous strategies that are evolving. I'm going to save Tesla's to the last. Waymo, as we have talked about, is LiDAR based. It depends on very high definition maps, and those high definition maps are then uh, enhanced by LiDAR as the car drives. And basically it's like it's driving on a a rail or something. You can think of it as like a roller coaster, right? It's on rails, it knows exactly where it's going, and it looks around and makes sure it, do makes sure it doesn't hit anything. That works okay, and it works well in the short term, but it is not scalable. The second one here is many Chinese players. I'm not as familiar with this, but basically they build out infrastructure sensors. So basically there's there's the environment itself has sensors in it that tells the car where it is. This sounds rather expensive. It Again, both of these alphabets and Baidu's Apollo method would work in a dense area where it's profitable to do this, but they're not going to scale to large country sections, et cetera, et cetera. They're, they're just, you know, you can't you can't scale this out to lower density populations because it's just too it, too expensive to do that. So we've got the third or the very first approach, which is low resolution maps and real time camera based driving, which is essentially how a human being drives, right? Again, if you're a human and somebody drops you in an unfamiliar city, assuming that, you know, you can speak the language well enough to read the traffic signs, you're going to be able to drive in that city. It's, so this is exactly what Tesla is doing. So if they get this worked out, it is going to be amazing and they're going to solve this problem. And if they do, they're going to be in the pole position to take most of this market, which is again, multiple trillions of dollars. So that's the reason why this is such a big deal if they can do it. All right, so scalability is going to determine the pace of autonomous ride hailing adoption. Yes, absolutely. So we've got Tesla's projected, which is a little bit on the aggressive side. And again, that's more like what I'm thinking about. Uh, my projections were based more on what Tesla's optimistic version is. Arc is forecasting lower. So Tesla by 2025 is projecting about a 20% adoption rate where Arc is projecting about a 10% adoption rate. Uh, anyway, in either case, it's just going to slow the transition down somewhat if it's Arc's version versus Tesla's, but the same thing will happen. It'll just happen at a different speed. All right, demand response could be higher in developed versus developing countries. This is fascinating. So here on the right, you can see that we're going a drop down from human ride hailing to autonomous ride hailing. Again, I'm not sure why they're saying 25 cents here versus $2. The numbers seem to be different between their different pages, so I'm not exactly sure. But like I said, I was going with the 40 cents, 25 to 40 cents per mile of actual cost to the consumer. And that's more or less what this is showing. And you can see that there is a massive decrease, like 88% from $2 a mile with Uber to 25 cents a mile with a autonomous ride hailing hypothetical thing like Tesla's fleet or something. And here in a developing country, you can see that that difference, so this is an 88% drop, whereas it's only a 50% drop in a developing country, mostly because the people who are driving the cars are going to be paid less, unfortunately, and probably they won't drive as expensive of a car either. So those two factors will make it less. But that means the developed world might actually change over faster than the developing world because it's going to make a bigger difference to have the autonomous vehicles in the developed world where salaries are higher than it does to have it in the developing world. So it's just an interesting factor and it could show how the growth could happen. The, the growth could project out from the developed world to the developing world, which sometimes doesn't go that way. It sometimes goes the other way around. But in this case, Arc is projecting it that way. All right, so they could hit more than a trillion dollars operating earnings. This is exactly what I was talking about by 2030, right? So here you can see just massive, massive 
well, I think this is one point two trillion dollars, <laughs> if I'm if I'm looking at this correctly. So uh, so basically, we're looking at right now we've got or by twenty twenty five one hundred and ninety billion dollars, by twenty thirty one point two trillion. So it scales up very rapidly. The the purple one is platform providers like Tesla. The the middle one is auto manufacturers, um, also like Tesla. Or like it just depends. A platform provider could be Tesla. It also could be the auto manufacturer. But let's say that GM teams up with another company. The company that they team up with could be the platform provider, and then GM could be the provider of the autos. And then the fleet owners might be somebody different. It might be like me if I had enough money. What I would do right now is I would buy hundreds of Teslas, and I would have them around. And then I would start John's, you know, <laughs> or Dr. Know-it-all's uh, ride hailing service. So even people who are just fleet owners who are coming along and who are just purchasing cars third party and then using those to generate a profit could also stand to make a great deal of money. Not nearly as much as the platform providers or the auto manufacturers, but they could do that, right? So it is possible. Basically what we're looking at here, this last page shows everything you need to know. We've got a massive, massive platform here that could generate trillions of dollars of profit. And this is the reason why Tesla is you know, working so hard to do this and also why, frankly, everybody else is. There's a lot of Chinese companies doing it. Certainly GM and uh, Waymo slash Google are working on this. Everybody's working on this. They really, really, want to solve this problem because this is going to be a really, really massive benefit to whoever solves autonomous driving. And it's really going to change the world. Again, like I said in earlier videos, which again, you know, if you <laughs> definitely check the links. You can, you can look at more individual topics that I've covered in more depth, but basically cars are going to become a service rather than a commodity. I guess that might be, or actually, honestly, an expense. Cars are really not so much commodities as expenses because cars cost you money and they depreciate over time. So you, not like a house, like a house costs you money, but it appreciates in time, hopefully. And so that's a very different thing than a car. A car is just an expense. People are going to get rid of that as soon as it makes more sense to get rid of that than it does to continue to own a car. Right now, it makes sense to continue to own a car. Soon, hopefully in five to 10 years, that will no longer be the case and everything's going to change. So in short, <laughs> these two sections, EV adoption is going to go crazy soon. And also autonomous adoption is going to go crazy and earn some people a whole lot of money. If the people who are smart and getting in on this at the ground, and honestly, even people who are investing in stocks like disruptive stocks, like Tesla and other things are are K, for example, I'm not a financial analyst. I'm not giving you advice, right? This is just my opinion. But basically people who are investing in that kind of stuff are going to stand to earn a great deal of money if all of this happens the way that I and ARC are projecting it to happen. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know it was a little bit loose because I'm just trying to do this live and kind of make it happen. <laughs> Hopefully that's okay with you all. Uh, anyway, I, if you did enjoy this, definitely make sure you like and subscribe for more of this stuff. Hopefully you do. Also, don't forget about our merch store, our Tesla and Amazon affiliate links, our Patreon page, which you can all find in the description. And thank you to everybody who has supported this channel so much. I appreciate it. And definitely ask me questions in the comments, especially about this or anything else or my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.